I think we can go ahead and make a start um, yeah. with some introductions. People might join us along the way. Um, oops, someone just joining now. Um, but yeah, if you'd like to kind of start with introducing yourself, um, telling us a bit about you, your background, um, what, <laughs> who you've worked with. Yeah, just give us a feel for you, really. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Hi everyone, I hope everyone's well. Um, my name is Vikram and um, by background I'm a chartered accountant and um, over the last 20 years I've been working with uh, one of the large accountancy firms and also over the kind of last five years I've been acting as a, a business mentor with the British Fashion Council uh, supporting um, designers on uh, their various programs like New Gen, uh, Fashion Trust, um, and, and those kind of things. Um, about a year ago, I decided to set up my own business and to kind of um, try and trying to bridge the gap between sort of creative entrepreneurs and um, and their accountants or bookkeepers, and just to work work, work alongside uh, designers to give them a better understanding of their accounts, tax, finances, and uh, those kind of matters. Uh, so people I've worked with over the years, um, so they've just ranged um, from kind of emerging designers up to sort of well-established designers, uh, people like J.W. Anderson, Julian McDonald, um, Mary Katransu, uh, but through the B BFC also a lot of the new gen designers, uh, people like uh, Regina Pio, Michael Halpern, Grace Wells Bonner, um, and and lots of others like that. Um, so that's my kind of uh, background. And now uh, also delighted to be working with Learn Design Club. And uh, there'll be details on the website for how we can work together in the future as well. Yeah, fantastic. We're very excited to be working with you too. Um, yeah, as Bikram mentioned, um, we have partnered to create a bespoke consultation package, um, especially for LDC brands um, and the community. So here to support everyone um, through the uncertain times that we are currently in, unfortunately. Um, but not to put a stop to anyone's business plans, we can still carry on um, and make the most of this situation. So that's why we've decided to kind of move forward with these um, webinars and these packages and things to really provide everyone with kind of the support and guidance. Um, so just a quick reminder, if anyone does have any questions, then feel free to pop them into the chat box below and we will get around to answering everyone's questions. Um, yeah, Bikram. Yeah, so I was just going to say, Amanda, over the last kind of three weeks, I've been having some kind of very interesting conversations with uh, with designers. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, to be honest, every, everyone's having problems and um, the kind of um, issues that crop up are things like, well, Paris, the showrooms in Paris, that wasn't great. So the orders weren't coming in to start with or the buyers weren't there. Um, there've been also uh, a lot of designers have been sort of talking about orders being cancelled or reduced and you know they're constantly having to deal with that um, with that problem on a day-to-day -day basis um, and that's led to sort of overstocking um, they're also worried about where they have um, sell-through guarantees and you know things aren't shifting and that they could potentially end up with uh, a problem there uh, obviously a lot of them have studio spaces and they still have to pay the rent and rates on those which is you know causing a problem on the cash flow and they're not being able to use them mm -hmm. um, collecting debts that's another problem uh, so you know some of the uh, stockists aren't being great in making payments so these these are kind of some of the some of the problems that I'm kind of hearing and I'm, I'm sure there'll be the, there'll be others as well mm -hmm. um, I don't know what kind of things you've been hearing from um, uh, the designers you work with, Amanda. 
Um, I think the general consensus has been that there's just a lot of uncertainty. People don't know what to do. They don't know kind of what their options are or how mm. to go about um, getting those. Um, yeah. I think people are kind of worried about how to make sales, how to get people to buy things when other people aren't necessarily um, thinking about spend, overly spending a lot of their own hard-earned money at the moment. Mm. Um, but I think there's kind of new ways that you could look at this. Obviously, people are still buying. Um, yeah. But there are kind of other routes to go down um, to try and, you know, maybe take some time to restructure or to, you know, get new support, find new connections and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and of course, then there's the sort of um, the kind of help that the government is uh, being announcing. Um, mm -hmm. And, they, and they've announced a, a whole series of, of, of measures, um, but you know, the devil's always in the detail. And you know, it's not always that easy to A, qualify for those um, uh, schemes or mm -hmm. the timing of them in terms of when you can get access to cash is, is, is also a, a kind of a problem. Um, so, couple of the things that you know they've been announcing that you know might be applicable to um, the designers that you're working with is obviously the uh, coronavirus business interruption loan which mm -hmm. is you know, provided through the banks and um, I was kind of reading an interesting statistic that um, and this was up until Friday last week I think there were about 300,000 applications and so far only about four or five thousand have been granted mm -hmm. so wow. it's taking the banks a little bit of time to get up to speed unfortunately um, and also you know they're still being relatively strict on kind of the information they require from the companies mm -hmm. so whether that's copies of the last three years accounts sort of cash flow projections uh, various profit and loss forecasts that that kind of thing so it, it does require the the companies to um, prepare some information in advance of uh, applying mm -hmm. and uh, and just processing all of that is taking time so that's that's what's causing some of the delay um, the other thing um, that a lot of companies are taking advantage of is the uh, job retention scheme mm -hmm. do you think it's worth just to yeah, I think that um, is, um, if you want to just kind of run through and explain everything as um, kind of basically, um, even though I'm sure most of you know, it kind of just helps um, people to understand yeah. kind of all the ins and outs of what's. Yeah, so the, um, the, uh, the job retention scheme is where you know, companies have staff that um, you know, basically can't work and they and the term they're using now is furlough is where you furlough staff um, you can um, you'll continue to pay um, up to you can pay 80 percent of their salary and, and claim that back from the government um, up to a maximum of two and a half thousand pounds um, but again there's some details in in that so the staff should have been on the payroll on the 28th of February to qualify and that scheme lasts for three months so it's pretty much covering the payroll for um, um, March, April and May um, and so that's that's something that a lot of companies have um, taken advantage of at the moment but it does mean that staff can't work for the companies so it's not a case of they're put on furlough but they still continue to work for the companies one interesting uh, point that has come out of all of this is sort of the one-man band companies or one-woman companies. Um, so where someone operates through a limited company, but they are effectively the only employee. And the sort of question that's been asked is, can that person furlough themselves mm -hmm. and um, take advantage of this? And 
the answer is yeah, they, they can, but uh, in order to do that, they've got to make a, that decision that they can't do work on behalf of that company. So you can't furlough yourself and then do work um, that with the aim of generating funds, uh, generating revenue, sorry. What would happen in that case? Um, and this is just something that's popped into my mind. So if it's not particularly on topic, then no worries. <laughs> um, but what if someone say a brand was a one man band and they had, they followed themselves so weren't working, but then they still had orders that were coming in and they had to fulfill those. Yeah. I mean, this is, um, there isn't a great deal of detail on, on this at the moment out there. What, what is out there is that, that you can still carry on the statutory duties of being a director. And that means, you know, if you have to deal with things like HMRC, um, if you have to deal with uh, your accountant mm -hmm. or, uh, or make certain payments, then that is fine. It's, uh, what, what they're saying is that you shouldn't be generating new revenue. So I think when it when it comes to fulfilling all orders that have already been placed, I think that's um, that's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I think once you start taking new orders and and generating new invoices, you, you start to get into the sort of gray area in terms of are you actually doing work that's generating income. Right. The other thing with um, with the kind of the one man band companies is you you've got to look at how you are paying yourself. And so if you were uh, taking a, a small salary and then topping that up as a dividend, mm -hmm. then the furlough scheme only applies to the salary element of your um, overall package and not the dividend. So you would effectively still receive the same salary? Well, you can get 80%, you, you can pay yourself the same salary, but you'll mm -hmm. only be able to recover 80% from the right. government up to a maximum of two and a half thousand pounds a month. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The, the other scheme, there are also schemes uh, for self-employed people, and that's the uh, kind of self-employment uh, income, income support scheme. And um, that allows kind of, people who operate as freelancers as on a self-employed basis to, uh, to claim some money back from the government. But again, there's some detail in all of that. And uh, in order to qualify, they should have uh, submitted a tax return for the year ended 5th of April, 2019. So if they were trading prior to that and submitted a tax return for that year, then they qualify. Unfortunately, for those uh, people that maybe commence trading after the 5th of April 2019, um, that they, they won't qualify for that scheme, unfortunately, because the government has no way of um, checking how much income they were, they were making because they haven't filed tax returns yet. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Uh, other things that uh, companies should be thinking of uh, or businesses should be thinking of is um, if they're having problems with making tax payments, then um, you can speak to HMRC and get um, try and work out a time to pay. So you know to stagger the the tax payments. Uh, if you can you know demonstrate that you're you're having issues because of the corona crisis, um, the government have also said that for companies that are registered for VAT and that have a VAT payment to make between March and June, they can defer that payment and uh, that's deferred up until March next year. So you get a, a little okay. bit of a, a break uh, to pay the VAT. Um, other things, uh, and this, this, is, this is quite a, uh, an, it's an organization that I came across recently, actually. I, I've never heard of them, but they're a, a government um, uh, set up by the government, but they're, they're an independent organization and they work free of charge. And it's called the Office of Small, Bus the, the Office of Small Business Commission. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of this, uh, this agency, um, Amanda. 
I think I have, but only because you might have sent it to me in an email. <laughs> okay. So this, um, this organization um, helps small businesses um, chase up their debts where those debts are from large companies. Uh, mm -hmm. And they define small and large uh, by the number of employees. So if, you're, if you've got less than 50 employees, you're small. If you've got more than 50 employees, you're big. So where that could help um, designers is if you know, one of the large stores was um, kind of unfairly withholding payment from them and they needed some help to put some pressure on those, uh, on those stores if uh, they were based in the UK, of course then uh, they can get in touch with the, uh, the small business commissioner and um, their team can, can help you chase those debts as well. And it's, a, it's, free, of, uh, it's free of charge. Great, fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so those, there are also sort of some grants available, but the grants tend to be for, um, kind of retail and leisure businesses so not so much for designers who may be working from a studio space but more for you know if you've got um, a retail outlet or then the um, the local council should have been in touch with you with regards to um, those grants it's not something you apply for you you'll get um, okay. informed if you're if you qualify for them cool and if someone were to, um, if someone needed to get into in touch with um, HMRC, say, or, you know, how do you, who do you get in contact with? Or is there just a, do you just... Yeah, there's a, there's a helpline. If, so if you Google HMRC. Okay. Um, and um, and you'll, you'll come across helpline. Uh, be prepared to be, be a little bit patient because it, it does at the best of times, take a little bit of time to connect through, but uh, you should be able to connect through. Just have all your kind of details to hand. So whether it's, you know, depending on whether you're uh, talking about VAT or corporation tax or, um, you know, self-assessment, just, just have your reference details uh, to hand when you, when you give them a call. Great. So is that all of the areas that the government can provide support in? Um, so far, that's pretty much the, the kind of things that they've, uh, I'm just looking at my notes, but that's pretty much um, the things they've just um, come out with so far. Uh, we'll wait to see what, uh, you know, as time progresses, if, if they come up with anything else. Uh, but mm -hmm. that's, that's it pretty much so far. Great. Is there anything else that... Um you feel like they could be doing any other areas that you feel are yeah not being I, supported? I, I, I think I, I sort of mentioned it before and it's it's something even the BFC have have raised it's it's giving creatives help with um, whether it's with their rent payments uh, or their rates on the studios and um, okay. I guess every industry will have um, have their own kind of um, areas where they would like help with but from the kind of designers that I'm working with uh, you know rent and rates is a is a big a big cost um, and uh, getting some government help would, would be great mm -hmm. um, so that's something I, I, I know the BFC are trying to lobby uh, with with, um, with government so uh, let's see if anything happens on that um, in the meantime, what uh, a lot of designers ha have been doing is, is opening up conversations with their landlords to, um, uh, to see if they can get some, either a, you know, a deferral of um, mm -hmm. rent or perhaps even a holiday. Right. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely worth opening up a, a conversation with, with, with your landlord if, if that situation applies to you. Okay, and what about in terms of um, insurance, maybe, of covering that? Is there any kind of, is it worth getting insurance now? Or um, is that if anyone is already insured? Like, yeah. what kind of 
return can they expect to see? So, so again, one of the exercises um, that I've been doing with uh, with some of the designers is to to kind of revisit the insurance policies that they had previously taken out. Um, so, whether they, you know, there's something called business interruption, and it's whether you, um, as a designer you you or as a business you you taken that out then there might be something to claim on that. Um, although, you know, I don't know if you've been following the news that, you know, most insurance companies are not taking just the fact that you've had to close mm -hmm. because of Corona as something that would then qualify you under the business interruption scheme. But mm -hmm. it's definitely worth having a look at your insurance policies to see what, what you were covered for. Also with a, with a lot of designers, um, they might now be holding more stock than they ever did. Yeah. And it's whether you need to up the level of cover. It's, it's something to look at. Um, but def definitely it's worth having a look at your insurance policy to see if anything um, um, can help you there in terms of, um, so for example, the fact if you can't operate from your, your premises, um, do they cover you for some rent or something like that? So that, but it, it all depends on, on what policies you've taken out. Okay, and if someone were to enlist you as a consultant, would that be the sort of thing that you would be able to go through with someone? Oh, de definitely. I mean, I'm not, I'm not an insurance expert or anything, but I'm very happy to, to, to sit down with people and, and, and review their policies um, and then see, you know, if we, if we need, Kind of extra help um, to 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 seek that out. Okay, great. Yeah. The I mean the other things that um, I'm kind of working on with with designers at the moment is is all the kind of good housekeeping stuff that um, you know you should be doing anyway. But in this current um, environment, it's even more important. So making sure you know you get good management information that you understand that management information uh, mm -hmm. and you're getting that on a timely basis so whether that's kind of management accounts every month or you know and and looking at those numbers um, also looking at you know your the people that owe you money the people that you owe money to mm -hmm. so obviously chasing up as hard as possible on the people that owe you money but then perhaps also opening up conversations with the people that you owe money to, to see if you can, you know, stagger those payments um, mm -hmm. if possible. But I think it's a lot about just opening up conversations with people because, you know, everyone's having problems and yeah. just, just having those, opening up those conversations to see if, you know, people can make payments even if it is in installments or whether you prefer mm -hmm. payments, um, anything to help cash flow at this this moment in time. Okay, and um, what, what would you? Oh, sorry. So, sorry, I was just going to say um, the other thing that you know it's it's really good practice to do um, at at any point in time, but even more so now, is um, to keep a, a proper cash flow forecast and a, um, a kind of a profit and loss forecast. Um, I've got some, um, some templates that apply to kind of fashion designers. If, if anyone wants, they can just get in touch and I'll, 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 I'll send you those kind of Excel templates that you can use. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, I'm always happy to uh, help um, you deal with those if, if you want. Perfect. And what would you, what advice would you kind of give to a small independent brand right now who is trying to kind of make themselves last for as long as possible? Um, is now the time to kind of scale back and, you know, keep your no, spending I, down to as little as I, possible yeah. or should it be business as normal? Well, I think obviously you know, each business is different, but controlling the um, the spend is 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 vital, and that's you know where the kind of cash flow forecast comes into play. So it's mm -hmm. kind of looking at what cash you have in the business right now, what money you're expecting in on a kind of week by week basis, what money is going out, and and making sure that you're 
you you know you're keeping within your um, your kind of limits. Uh, it's it's also if you if you don't have an overdraft facility with the bank, is that something you you need to think about? Uh, of course, the these things all cost money, and um, you know potentially they could uh, ask the individual for a personal guarantee for any loans or, or um, uh, overdraft facilities. But it's it's something to just think about and see if if it fits for if it works for your business, uh, because all these applications are taking time, and so it's it's worth sort of considering those things in advance, and then you know then making a decision to whether you want them or not. But perhaps opening up those conversations and and discussions now with your bank uh, could could save you time later on. Yeah, and for a smaller company, how far would you recommend going in terms of loans? Obviously, that's something that needs yeah, paying back I'm, eventually, and you don't want to be. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm always a little bit nervous with 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 these loans. Uh, from some of the stories that I've heard, you know, they've come with um, quite high interest rates. Mm -hmm. um, they've, you know, sometimes they're asking for personal guarantees. And um, and so I think you need to little, be a little bit cautious with some with with some of these with the you know the, the business interruption loans that the uh, government has talked about. Um, if this is just a, a, a kind of a temporary blip, and mm -hmm. you think that once you know the situation clears up, you know you'll be able to to kickstart your business quite um, quite soon, and you know money's money will start flowing in and you know it'll still be profitable um then it, it's it's something to consider i think where businesses were already struggling pre the corona crisis mm -hmm. I, th I think you've got to be really cautious and um even the banks um they're not that keen to lend if if they can sort of see that the businesses was already struggling before right. the, the 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 situation occurred yeah yeah interesting um in terms of people's kind of business plan i know you mentioned this um in your forecast when you referenced the forecast briefly um how long do you think people need to be preparing for um well i i i'm kind of looking at doing one for for this year like doing a revised forecast for this year um and uh and then looking at 20 at least you know 2021 as well and the thing with these these forecasts is that they you you constantly change you constantly update mm -hmm. them so as soon as you have a bit more information you you update and um so if you know someone isn't paying you this month but is now going to pay you next month. You adjust your cash flow accordingly, and uh, and and then you can see how that impacts your business. You know the fact that you may have been expecting some payment now, but you may be not going to get that payment. Or um, if someone you know, if one of your stock is um, goes bankrupt and can't pay you, what impact is that going to have on your business? And what other decisions do you then have to make? Mm -hmm. uh, on, on that basis. So I, I really like that kind of cash flow forecast as a as a tool for um, kind of keeping on top of your 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 business. I'm sorry, you say how long? Hi. Um, so I, I I normally would say you you've got to have one for at least the next nine months. So taking you up to the end of this year, uh, because the situation is going to change all the time. Okay, cool. Yeah, but I would, I would say at least, you know, have one for, for, for this year now. A revise, if, if you had one already, you know, you, you'll probably need to revise it a bit. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, de definitely for this year. Okay. Okay, great. Um, and was there anything else that you kind of wanted to bring up? Or? Um, I think also um, just to remind people, uh, again, where, they, where they're running companies, um, their responsibilities as directors of those those companies um, 
to make sure that you know the, the, that you're not trading insolvently. So, if uh, that's something you've got to always be very um, uh, careful um, to to judge that you're not getting into this position where you're just incurring more and more debt. Um, and so you really need to be speaking to your accountant uh, and getting some advice if you feel like you know things are getting a little bit mm-hmm. um, bit tricky. Um, what do you? What would you recommend to someone who doesn't have an accountant? Um, I think well, you can speak to me. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's uh, that's the first thing. But um, you know, we um, I, I work with a lot of uh, different firms of accountants, whether they're kind of small or or, or large. And so if you're, uh, if you don't have one, then, you know, speak to me. I'm happy to uh, talk you through most things, but, you know, I can always give a recommendation for a, for a firm of accountants, uh, ones that work with other kind of fashion designers as well. So they understand um, the business. Um, um, yeah. Okay. Cool. And should we talk a bit about what kind of um, you would cover for each person in your consultation? Yeah, so I think it, I've, I've set it up as sort of two levels. Uh, one is just um, kind of a, a 90 minute call. And I think that's just to have a, for me to get a really good understanding of, of, of um, the business and the issues um, that the company is facing and give some kind of immediate recommendations based on that. Um, uh, and then the way I, I work with my, my own clients, and which is what I've, I'm proposing with, uh, with, with, with this scheme, is to kind of do um, a, a three-month um, um, kind of session. And that would give the, um, the designer access to me over the, over the three months. Uh, I've priced it out for like three hours a month. But you know that we can be flexible on on that, um, mm-hmm. and then it's really sitting down with the um, with with the uh, the brand and and looking at their finances in more detail. So I mentioned up front that you know that are they getting good management information? If not, then you know we need to speak to the bookkeeper or the accountants to to make sure that the um, the owner uh, director gets uh, kind of proper information at the right time. Uh, then we can also look at things like, you know, the cash flow forecast, the PNL forecast, um, and uh, just just keep on top of those things over the, mm-hmm. the coming months. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, I think a, a very important area, obviously. Um, yeah, and uh, you know, it's 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 what I I, un- I I totally get it. It's it's kind of worrying and uncertain times. Um, but um, perhaps this this period gives us a little bit more time to to get our own houses in order. If if kind of the accounts function and system wasn't sort of very tight and um, and you weren't kind of getting all that information that I talked about, or, or you weren't looking at things like forecasting and and um, you know budgeting, then now it might be a time to um, to, to have a look at that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So what would be, um, if anyone has any questions, definitely ask them now. Um, yeah. Or, you know, um, they can get my email address. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, um, we, we will send a follow up to everyone. Yeah. So, um, if anyone has anything that kind of springs to mind afterwards, then definitely get in touch. Yeah. Um, um and I've, I've talked very generally now, but, you know, for each, each business will be, will be different. You know, so like I said, some people will be operating through a limited company. Some people may be self-employed. Um, so we just need to look at each, uh, each uh, person's uh, own circumstances and, and then see what, what help is available. Definitely. I think it's important to note that no one is going to be in the right position right now or yeah. would be very rare that you would be I think given that this is an uncertain time for everyone there's kind of no real right or wrong position to be in um so 
just kind of gathering that information using the support network that you have um, yeah. and making um, the most out of kind of the opportunities that are on offer um, is definitely how we'll get through this. Yeah. Also, there's a, there's a lot of good information on the, you know, the BFC website that if people want, you know, there's some good reports out there. There's some, you know, uh, there's, there's some, some, some help on, on, on their website as well. So it's, it's worth having a look there for, for designers. Great. And of course, um, anything that anyone needs, they can always come to RDC. Um, yeah. We are always here to kind of support the network in yeah. any way that we can do. Absolutely. Yeah, There's that's a fu funny story. I don't know if you, you read about the next website. No. Okay. They, they opened up their online um, uh, shopping uh, website. I think it was on Friday or something. Mm -hmm. And the amount of people, that went on it to order crash the website oh so it looks like people are <laughs> shopping for clothes people <laughs> certainly are shopping that's um I, that's i'm sure the, you guys have seen that with uh, with with your brands as well you know. yes we have we have certainly um sorry someone has said is it shoppy Didn't understand yeah, the question. Shopee again. website. <laughs> huh? Is it Shopee website? You say uh, the website that crashed because of Oh no, that was next. Next. N E N E X T. That's it's just a high street um, um, retailer. There we go. Next. Yeah. Mm. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much, Vikram. Um, that was very insightful and interesting. Um, I hope everyone found it useful. Um, and yeah, as I mentioned, we will send around a follow up email to everyone to make sure that you guys got um, the information you were looking for. Um, and kind of any other areas that we can help you out in. I'll also send around all the information for Vikram's consultation sessions. Um, so yeah, please do kind of ask questions, get in touch, um, ask us if there's anything that we can do to help. Um, we're all here to support one another. Um, but yeah, thanks everyone for coming. Um, and thank you very much, Vikram. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks. Uh, thanks, everyone. Great. And we'll, we'll be in touch. Cool. Bye. Bye.